the truth behind snail slime in skincare and what the industry might be trying to hide from us. I'm a medical esthetician who has struggled with acne and people are constantly telling me about how great snail mucin and snail slime is, how it's used in some countries and it's just being discovered by places like America and the Western world, and why as an acne sufferer and a medical esthetician, I absolutely need to try it on myself and others. Well, I'm not only a medical esthetician and an acne sister, but I'm also a critic and a skeptic and a vegan. I'm someone who doesn't use animal-based products, yet I've been hearing about all of these magical claims about snail. And I decided that I needed to get to the bottom of this. What is snail in skincare? What is it good for? And most importantly, does it actually hurt the snails or not? I feel like this is at the core of the conversation. Does it hurt the snails? Do they have to kill the snails to get the secretions? And while I've asked around and tried to get some manufacturing manufacturers to answer me, I decided to actually go to Korea to literally ask people to their face and to try to find out answers for myself. And things, well, things didn't go as planned. <laughs> First off, what is snail mucin and how does it actually work? Well, snail mucin is called snail slime or snail secretions and snails create it for three main reasons. The first is to move. Snails can literally slime upside down and basically defy gravity and their secretions allow them to kind of suction to different surfaces to do that. Number two is that it's actually a defense mechanism or something they do when they're stressed. It's a way to tell others back off. And number three, that might even be related to pleasure. If snails are happy, they may be secreting more. Now, while snail mucin has some benefits in skincare, there are many different types of snails and therefore many different types of mucin. And some snail mucin can actually be harmful to humans. And yes, I mean toxic in the biology or medical definition, meaning created by an organism, created by an animal that is actually poisonous or dangerous to others, such as you and me. Now, snail mucin has actually been around for quite a long time. There have been medical studies showing that certain ingredients inside of snail mucin can actually be helpful for things like arthritis or nephritis, basically kidney inflammation. I've specifically only got one kidney Kidney, so that was very interesting to me. It can also be helpful for liver disease and fatigue. Now, while this one ingredient that's found in snail mucin seems really promising, the history of snail mucin goes back even further. We're talking to the Roman days. Romans used to do something very mean to snails. And this is what I originally had heard of and why I avoided snail mucin or even researching it for so long. In ancient Roman times, people would actually crush up and grind snails, literally taking the entire organism, the snail, the mucus, the shell and everything, crushing it up and rubbing it on their skin. And the Romans would do this to help with redness, to help with inflammation, and even with wound healing. I actually took a class on ancient Egyptian medicine in college, and I learned quite a bit about snails and other organisms and things that I didn't necessarily want to know. And so back when I was first introduced to snail mucin in Western skincare, or even in Korean skincare, I wanted nothing to do with it because I was under the assumption that they were crushing the snails the way that the ancient Romans did. Literally, the ancient Romans would have like these snail gardens, like these cages outside of their house houses where they had snails in them and they would pluck them up, crush them up and put them on their skin. As another note, ancient Egyptians actually used to take baby diapers soaked with urine and put those on their faces. So just saying, um, we've come a long way. <laughs> but all of that aside, the cosmetic industry today is saying that they're still getting some of the same benefits that the ancient Romans had, like anti-wrinkle, like hydration and wound healing, but without the cruelty because there are new ways of extracting this magnificent snail slime. But again, I'm not only a medical esthetician and a vegan, but I'm a critic and a skeptic. And I wanted to understand firsthand how this worked. Now, when I was in Korea, I got to do so many amazing things. I actually spoke with a dermatologist about his opinions on skincare, snails, including other things. I actually went to some manufacturing labs where I'm creating something very special and went behind the scenes to make vegan and cruelty-free products. But while I was there, I asked the experts as well as locals about snail and skincare. And the hard, sad truth is that a lot of people don't have those answers. A lot of people just genuinely didn't know how the snail secretion was extracted. Even the manufacturing companies that I visited either didn't have the information or wouldn't want to share it. One of the most popular brands in Korea that sells snail mucin products is COSRX. Now, I wasn't able to get in touch with them or to go to their manufacturers, but they have made public statements about where they get their snail mucin before. And this is where it gets interesting because no, they don't crush up the snails like the ancient Romans did, but it seems that there are some ways of extracting snail mucin that happens in Korea. But it sounds like I may have gone to the wrong country because this also happens in France and in Italy. One of the biggest ways that snail secretions are extracted is using these large washing machines. There's basically an Italian manufacturer who created these large domes that took 
nine years. It's literally like a bath for snails, but in a washing machine. And sometimes I believe they're washed with a salt or saline solution. If you've ever sprinkled salt on a snail, you know, they go, I think it's kind of like that on a big industrial scale, but there's also some sort of acidic or like apple cider vinegar type of wash. Basically these acidic potions that are washed over the snails to get them to secrete. They then collect those secretions, they extract the moisture, they purify it and then rehydrate it. I don't know if like putting snails in a wash machine is really something that I like when I like watch videos of this happening. It seems a little bit traumatic. Like the snails don't look happy. It doesn't look like that's very fun, but there are biology studies saying, does this actually hurt the snail or is this just kind of like a knee jerk reaction? Like, is this just a muscular contraction that the snails are doing automatically? Do they actually feel pain and does this actually hurt them? Now, unfortunately, in some of these big old washing machine apparatuses, some of the snails do get crushed. They kind of get in the, you know, in the, in the cracks and in the seams and there, <clears throat> there they go, just like with the ancient Romans. As a vegan, I can't get behind that. But thankfully, there are other ways of extracting snail mucin as well. The one that's often used in Korea is actually like, think of it as like an electrocution floor. I, this sounds so awful. And as a vegan, I'm like, what the heck is this? But CauseRx and other brands and manufacturers claim that this doesn't hurt the snails. They're claiming that they put the snails on like this wire mesh or this like web and they let the snails slime across it. And then they like, put electricity in it and it like gets them to secrete, but it doesn't hurt them. It like tickles them or something. Now, again, if a snail is creating positive secretions, like happy secretions, maybe that's the answer, but nobody will show you videos of this. Nobody will tell you how this works. And there's actually a blogger who reached out to one of the manufacturers saying, can you show me? And the blogger was given a tour of the farm, like the snails eating lettuce, and she was handed free products, but they wouldn't let her behind the scenes to see how the snail mucin was actually secreted. So the fact the fact that it's shrouded in this secrecy also makes me wonder, like, are these happy secretions or is this a defense mechanism that actually hurts or is discomforting to them? And one thing that the industry continues to talk about is that they don't want to kill the snails. If you kill the snail, you cannot have the snail to secrete, which makes sense. But the question from my perspective is, is this actually causing more good or more harm? And then based on these snail secretion extracts, is this just fancy marketing claims telling us that it's going to heal acne and like be wound healing and help our skin? or are there actually properties found in snail slime that you cannot find anywhere else that is majorly beneficial to our beauty routines? Now there is a third method of extracting snail secretions, which one guy who's like 28 years old in France does, he basically tickles the snails. <laughs> He's literally got like a farm of 60,000 snails or like 4,000 snails in his backyard. And he sits there and he tickles the snails. And he says that this creates happy, positive secretions and he can collect this and use them in beauty products such as soaps. But again, the question is, if you have a farmer who's like out there in the field feeding his snail some lettuce and like tickling them, that's one thing. But if you're trying to sell thousands, 10,000, 100,000 bottles of snail secretion filtrate for beauty products, you have to do that at a much larger scale. And as you get much larger, do you really have a bunch of happy farmers tickling their happy snails? I don't think so. It makes sense that large machines like these snail washing machines were created that can extract large amounts of this all at once. But then do we lose that peace, that humanity, that kindness that actually goes into the farming of the snail secretions and turns it into cruelty. One thing that a lot of the Korean brands say, specifically CauseRx says, is that obviously animal testing is banned in Korea. It's not okay to test products on animals and animal cruelty is taken very seriously. But do people see these crustaceans, aka snails, as animals and do those same laws apply? It's really a gray area. And again, the fact that nobody is willing to kind of like open up the doors and show people people behind the scenes of how the snail secretions are extracted. That just leaves me being even more skeptical, like innocent until proven guilty, but what, what do you got to hide? Now, again, a lot of these brands are saying that snail mucin has so many great properties for the skin. And when we get down into it, yes, snail mucin can be helpful for wound healing. It can be hydrating and it can minimally plump up fine lines and wrinkles. But how exactly does that work? Well, snail mucin is naturally rich in hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is created by you and me. It's literally in our joints. It's in our 
bodies. It's created by roosters as well in their little rooster combs. But do we need to extract this from roosters or from snails to get this hyaluronic acid and to get the benefits? Snail mucin has also been shown to have high antioxidant properties. But do you know what else is really high in antioxidants and doesn't harm snails? Vitamin C, other anthocyanins, basically what makes blueberries and blackberries have their rich color. I mean, heck, even green tea, those are full of antioxidants, more antioxidants than snail mucin, and they don't harm the snails. Snail mucin is also high in glycosaminoglycans, but again, we can find that from plant-derived sources. And the question becomes, are snails really the best place to get this blend of ingredients? Or are there other methods that we could do that that are more eco-friendly or cruelty-free? And that also comes down to the question of eco-friendliness, right? If we're able to use plant sources to extract these ingredients and put them inside of our skincare products, how is that different from feeding snails plants, harvesting the snails, and then having them excrete that? From my outsider perspective and opinion, it seems like it is an extra step that is being taken to do that. However, if the snails have something magical about them or their secretions really are just that good and it's not a marketing claim, are snail secretions something that everyone should be using or that we should have in our skincare products that a lot of people are avoiding because of some of these questions and therefore forgoing all of the benefits? The other thing that a lot of manufacturers or snail farmers point to is the fact that they let the snails go be happy snails for like three months after they secrete. Again, I'm not a snail expert, but apparently the snails need to regenerate in between secretion escapades. <laughs> and so they literally have like time off from their washing machine or like electric blanket <laughs> episodes. And I think it's great that again, the manufacturers and the farmers are trying to keep these snails alive, but I am still very curious as to how this all works behind the scenes and just why there's not more transparency in this. My big question is, are the snails murdered or are they okay? There have been studies done by biologists looking at snails and whether or not they like this kind of stimuli. And gastropods such as snails will try to escape from painful stimuli. If something is painful for them, they will try to retreat. When I just look at some of these images of the snails like getting their washing machine steam acid bath, I mean, it just looks painful. I don't know, I could be totally wrong. Does that not look painful? But again, the same study said that it could be because of pain or it could just be a reflex. Just the way if the doctor hits you on the knee with the little triangle, your leg's gonna go whoop if you have, you know, functioning nerves. Is this just a knee-jerk reaction that the snail is going through or is it actually a painful stimuli that is upsetting to it? Or do they even have the ability to emotionally regulate what's going on? Now, all of this really comes down to information and personal opinion. Again, in my personal opinion, the reason that I'm vegan is for animal rights. I don't want to take something without consent that doesn't belong to me. It's the same reason that I don't use beeswax or wool. And a lot of people say, well, wool doesn't harm the sheep. It actually helps the sheep to get rid of the wool. Or beeswax extraction doesn't actually hurt the bees. They don't need it anyways. But from my perspective, I don't want to take something that doesn't belong to me without permission. And also sheep naturally aren't that wooly. They were bred to produce more wool and now they can't live without the help of humans because they overproduce that wool. Chickens, eggs, you know how a chicken lays an egg every day? Chickens actually used to lay eggs once a month. Just the way people with XX chromosomes and females have periods every single month, that's what a chicken did. But humanity bred chickens to make eggs every single day, and now that's what we've got. I don't understand all the nuances to these things, but I look at this and say, this is something that I want more information on and that I don't want to contribute to. Now, that's not to make anyone feel bad for eating bee products or using wool or using snail mucin, but I do think that we should have the information available for us to make our own decisions. My decisions are going to be based on my opinion of the world, my experiences, and my morals and values, just the way somebody else's or yours are. But I think it is important for you to have all of this information and to get the truest information so that you can make decisions for yourself. And if you would like to use animal-based products, you totally can, but you are informed. Or if you'd like to look for plant-based or cruelty-free alternatives, you have those too. I actually have some cruelty-free snail mucin alternatives specifically from V Green and Mixoon that I love. But again, in my mind, I'm like, how do these actually compare to real snail mucin? Because I see people on TikTok using it and they love it. And I'm like, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of curious, you know what I'm saying? While I have my own questions and opinions on this, I think that Courts of Holy Snails actually said this best. And I quote, Unfortunately, the beauty industry is shrouded in mystery. I think it's been that way since it was first started. Courts specifically thinks that the beautification of products and the importance of brand stories have in many cases led to marketing getting in the way of information. I completely agree. It's really good to discuss and to question these things. I hope that we end up learning more, but at the
the end of the day, you deserve to have the information as clearly laid out as possible so that you can make the best choices for you. Always remember to be a critic and a skeptic. Stay hydrated both orally and topically. I will link some of my non-snail favorites down here for the time being. Always reapply that SPF, and I don't know of any SPF with snail mucin, but if one exists, please tell me, and I will try to contact the manufacturer and find out how they get their snail secretions. Do they tickle them, or do they electrocute them, or put them in the washing machine? I don't know. And most importantly, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.